Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. Question I get a lot is, um, I think I made videos about it, but I might as well throw in another one. Failure, right? I get so many questions about going to failure. What is the perfect set? Do you have to go to failure or not if you want to see growth? And obviously, like I said, this is in um, hypertrophy, right? I'm not talking about strength training. I don't, I don't have experience in strength training. Do I, you know, do I emphasize strength in my routines? I'm all about building muscle. Like I said, I said it over and over again. I'd rather be muscular as fuck and weak than strong as fuck and look scrawny possible you could be scrawny you could look scrawny and be strong as well. but anyway so what is the um do you have to go to failure for muscle growth now you guys know me i've been on this shit for you know the, what two years now and i used to live when i was in um my first years of college you know i didn't know anything so i got a lot of experience under my belt and i got a lot of mistakes under my belt like uh for instance lifting for two years and looking the way i do you could tell i made a lot of mistakes you know i should be a lot bigger than i am now but why? That's because I trial and error. I kept trying different things, and I, I'm still trying different things. But it allowed me to go full round, you know, full circle, and come back and know what works and what doesn't work. So I know what the fuck I'm talking about. I experimented with everything under the sun. It's bad when you want to grow, uh, you, you know. But in the long run, it's beneficial because when you come back full circle, you know what to, you know, what to fuck with and what not to fuck with. So I know what the fuck I'm talking about. I experimented with everything you could think about during years training. Arthur Jones, similar type of shit, uh, Ronnie Coleman style training, uh, I, everything, right? And I look back at my old videos, if you guys have been following me for a long time, you see my body, my physique has changed. You know, some some months uh, I was really big and muscular, some months I was scrawny looking, you know, doing my box, some months I was fat. So I could go back on my workout log and I can go back on my, on my videos and match my workout log. For example, if I see that I look big in November, and I'll go in my workout log and see what I was doing in November. You know, if I said I was scrawny in February, I'll look back and see what I was doing in February. And nine out of 10, it was always different things. You know, I was doing different things and I was able to pinpoint what worked and what didn't, which is amazing. It's fucking beautiful. And so now I know, now that I have, I've designed this new training program for my body, I know exactly what works and what doesn't work. And then again, you guys know me, I like studying other people. I like looking at other people with great physiques and that are even outside of bodybuilding and draw my conclusion powerlifters, weightlifters, uh, wrestlers, MMA, boxers, you name them, even farmers. So back to your question. All right, I hope this video is still playing. All right. Uh, for muscle growth, do you have to go to failure or not? I say yes. Why? Um, when it, I'm going to show you three, three types of people. You have bodybuilders, you have powerlifters, you have bodybuilders who lift, you know, you know 10 to 12 rep reps to failure, whatever. You have powerlifters who do three to five reps to failure sometimes. And then you have people that do static um, static contractions. You have like gymnasts. A lot of gymnasts just do static contractions on their triceps, you know, when they're on those fucking poles and shit. I don't know what the fuck you call them. You know what I'm talking about. Um, gymnasts, they gotta like do like st static dips and shit. And they have these huge ass triceps without doing fucking rope pull downs and shit, right? And a lot of them don't even lift, lift weights. You know, I've, I've read some interviews and you know, the triceps are all well developed. So you have static contractions to failure. You have uh, high reps to failure. You have short reps to failure. But yet they all display muscle growth. So what is the conclusion you can draw from that? It's simple. Struggle, right? The set where you struggle the most is where you're gonna get growth. If you go to failure at three reps, as long as you struggle in that fucking set, you're gonna get you some growth. It won't be as, as crazy as a bodybuilder who's doing fucking 15 to 20 reps on squats and shit, but you're gonna get growth, right? It's progressive overload. You have to give your body more stress. Your body is only, your body loves homeostasis. It loves staying the way it is now. So it is only gonna grow when you when you put it under a stress that it's not used to, right? A set should not be comfortable. You shouldn't do it. I see people working and when they're done, they're like, yeah, they can still talk and shit. That's a comfortable ass set. You're not gonna get any growth out of that. You know, you're gonna get noob gains, basic growth, but not any extraordinary gains. You have to struggle in that state. If you have to go to failure and beyond, yes, you know? I mean, I got growth on my legs from doing, uh, you guys know my legs are skinny as fuck. They still are, but I got a lot of growth on my quad. From doing three to five rep squats, five rep squats max for like, you know, over two to three months. Never went above five, but I went to failure. It was heavy as fuck every time. You know, and I got growth from my other body parts by doing 15 to 20 reps. Some body parts, six to eight reps. So it's it all boils down to this. You have time on attention. That's a great factor. You have the optimal rep range. You have all these factors, heavyweight. But the most important factor to make a set count is struggle. You have to struggle, right? You go to failure with 200 pounds, right? I can give you 15 pound dumbbells and make you go to failure.
felt it with that shit, you're still gonna grow. If you design your workout to be brutal enough, you know, I've seen people struggle with 15 pound curls because they're the time on the tension and you know, I mean, think about it. 15 pounds may, may be light when you first lift that shit, 